In this episode of Talking About Orcs, we're going to be going over Mad Doc Grotznik and the Pain Boy. So the main purpose of these models, of course, is to give an aura of what is essentially a feel-no-pain type effect, where for each wound lost on a model on a 6-up, that wound is not lost. And it's very important to notice that these are by wound, not by... or by damage, not by wound. So that if a Orc Boy, say, takes two damage, you have to roll a pair of 6-ups to avoid both wounds. And those are from the Doc's Tools rules. Roll a d6 for each time a friendly orc infantry or biker loses a wound while it's within three inches of Mad Doc Grotznik. On a six up, the wound is not lost. This is not cumulative with, other, with Doc's Tools, other Doc's Tools. Now, the important thing is that when you look at the Pain Boy, the Pain Boy says friendly clan Pain Boy. So the big difference here is between Mad Doc and, and a regular Pain Boy is Mad Doc will heal any clan Pain Boys will only heal their own matching clan. So that's an important difference there. Uh, and they also have saw bones at the end of your movement phase. They may try and heal. Um, one orc infantry or bike unit with one inch of them. Uh, D6 determines surgery is successful. On one surgery fails, and the model your Timmy Hill loses a wound on a two up, the surgery succeeds, and the model regains D3 lost wounds. You can only be target of, of a surgery attempt once per turn. And again, Mad Doc is not clan specific, whereas the Pain Boy is clan specific. So, again, that's a very important distinction to make and a very good reason to take Mad Doc if you're running multiple uh, clans. Um, Mad Doc also has a cyborg body where he, he himself has a 5-up film of pain effect instead of using the Doc's tools on himself. But of course it's not cumulative and you can't use both, uh, both of them. So it's just a 5-up. And the Pain Boy has access to a Grot Orderly, which once per battle you can reroll the dice when this model is attempting to heal a model using the Sawbones ability, either when determining the surgery is successful or determining the number of wounds regained. So that's not a bad ability for just a couple points that the Grot Orderly costs. And it's not actually an upgrade. So the Grot Orderly is just a built-in ability to the Pain Boy. Because it's not a model, unlike, let's say, an Attack Squig. Yeah, it's not an ability. so it's just a built-in ability to the Pain Boy. Um, I didn't realize that. I thought it was an upgrade, but it's not. So there's no model for it, and there is um, no points cost associated with it. So Grot Orderly is a great ability for the Pain Boy. So it's just it's only once per battle, but it, once per battle might be enough. Especially if you're like trying to heal a war boss on its last wound, and instead of and you roll that one. And so that's a good time to use that crowd orderly. So that's something to keep in mind with the Pain Boy. Um, I've never used it because I forgot it was there. And the other thing with Mad Doc Grosnick is one scalpel short of a men pack. At the start of the charge phase, if Mad Doc is not within three inches of a fr another friendly orc infantry unit, not within one inches of an enemy unit, and is within 12 inches of an enemy unit, he will automatically attempt to charge the nearest enemy unit. He can do so even if he advanced or fell back in the same turn. So this goes back to the old Mad Doc must charge the closest unit unless he's within three inches of a friendly orc infantry unit. Again, non-clan specific. So let's talk about what they get to see. Mad Doc Rasnik, um, they're virtually identical stats too. Mad Doc has one additional toughness and he has a two plus weapon skill versus the Pain Boy's three plus weapon skill. He also got Leadership 8, which will, could be handy with Mob Rule. Mad Doc Grosnick is a single model armed with a Slugga, Power Claw, and an Erty Syringe. And a Pain Boy is a Pain Boy single model armed with an Erty Syringe and a Power Claw. Power Claw is, of course, the same. Um, in the Index, of course, Pain Boys have the option of taking a Kill Saw, which they do not have in the Codex. So if you can play Index, you can. Pro I, would still, I would still recommend taking a Kill Saw on this guy, because there's only a couple more points and it gives you a better AP and a flat damage instead of having to worry about a D3. So I will always take a kill saw over a power claw if I have the option on a pain boy. 
but Erdy Syringe is kind of interesting because each time the bear fights, he can make one additional attack with this weapon. The weapon always wounds on a 4-up, unless it's targeting a vehicle or Titanic, in which case it wounds on a 6-up. So, yeah, that's kind of cool that you just get one extra free attack. And they both have four base attacks, so um, with a power claw, that's not too bad. And so the pain boy is going to be running in with the standard power claw at 65, Mad Doc at 86. And of course, Mad Doc is Death Skulls, so he can only go in a Death Skulls detachment unless you want to not benefit from the uh, clan traits. But again, Death Skulls with this guy are pretty good because you're hitting him with that power claw with four attacks, hitting on threes with a reroll. And when he's going to be strength 10, so he's going to be wounding almost everything on twos or threes with a reroll. And you can reroll that D3 damage. So having Death Skulls with a single power claw equipped model is pretty darn awesome. And the Pain Boy, of course, is very important for added survivability to your clan for not a lot of price. I mean, the question is, is he going to roll, he's 65 points, is he going to roll 11 sixes over the course of a game? Probably. So if he can roll more than 11 sixes over the course of a game, he's paid for himself versus just taking 11 more boys. But again, you know, there is a limit to how many boys you can take. So there is that. And Mad Dog, Mad Dog I think, is just, if you're running Death Skulls, you might as well take the, uh, Mad Dog instead because his ability to affect any clan <coughs> and his Death Skull rerolls and his Death Skulls six. Oh, that's right. He's got a six up in Vol Safe because he has Death Skulls. I almost forgot about it. So that does stack with the cyborg body. So you get that six of Minval save, and then you get your five up, feel no pain on him. So, because he is Death Skull. So that is not a bad bargain for what you get out of him. So that is the Pain Boys. And again, it's just another layer of survivability to add to your army. And it really comes down to if you're going to roll enough sixes over the course of a game to make it worth it. I'm statistically, I mean, if you're dealing with 90 boys, it takes 90 hits or 90 wounds to kill them. Uh, you're going to roll way more than 11 sixes out of 90. So it's going to be worth it. And that doesn't include healing up any characters or bikes. Because even just regular war bikes, if one of them has taken a wound, you can heal that guy up for his missing wound. Which is very much worth the investment. Especially if it's the knob. If the, if the knob's taking a wound, you just heal him up. That's not bad at all. So, um, Pain Boys are pretty much a mainstay of, the, of, of many orc armies. And as I said, just doing the math are probably always going to be worth taking over just more boys. Let me know with your op uh, opinions below and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Talking About Orcs. Please subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications for new Talking About Orcs videos every Wednesday, new battle reports every Friday, and hobby videos whenever I can. Thanks for watching.